Jimmy Chungus is an unqualified fraud with a delusional fan base, and while it's no secret that I have a visceral hate for this trailblazer, I've not really gotten around on doing an entire dedicated video laying out all my issues with him. But something I don't have a hate for is today's sponsor for this video, Lootbar.gg. Firefly is coming, and we all know she's going to be omnipotent, therefore we need to start farming stellar jades now. So do we go to the Oneric pouch shop? No, unless you're missing a chromosome, you do. Instead, use my link in the description to go to Loot Bar's Honkai Star Rail category. Put in your UID and server here and take advantage of amazing prices. By leveraging international payment systems, Loot Bar is able to find you the best price for where you live. And all this recharging happens through official Hoyoverse channels. Let's farm 3,280 Stellar Jades. You will get an order process form like this in a couple minutes, so let's check in game now and there we have it. Anyways, click the link in my description if you also want to improve your stellar jade farming in a major way. So for anyone that pays attention to the lore, it's very obvious that Jinx Need is one of the most unqualified, undeserving, unskilled, and unremarkable generals of all time. Who X1 summarizes this fraud well when Yan King has added to her party, informing us that Yan King is a better fighter and she is a better strategist. And we see that in the story, Fu X1 basically does everything for the general. Wasn't that my idea, General? Indeed. Why are you staring at me? Every crisis is a turning point. A problem is easier to resolve when you know where it lies. coming up with a plan again of course you may use your discretion on the matters ahead of us <laughs> why don't you retire early and i use my discretion full time and Yang King does not respect Jing's needs so much that he has the audacity to outright walk out on his superior in the story i've asked our friends from the express to take care of that for us worry not you'll have your moment when the current stalemate is broken you are my most trusted aide and there are some things that I would only assume- Jontron is no leader and none of his subordinates respect him. Like, it's to the point that Fu X1 expects so little out of Jing that when he finally shows up in physical form, she is utterly shocked. Xing Yuan, where have you been? <laughs> and like, you can just tell from Yun Jing's body language that he just didn't want to be there. Unsurprisingly, during the final battle against Phantolinx, John Yuan is a living, breathing liability and Dan Hung has to bail him out in a major way. Yet Jimmy Kimmel still had the audacity to make himself the center of attention by giving a performative closing speech telling the entity to be gone. And the look on the Astral Express crew's faces are like, hold on, you didn't do anything what is with this guy. And that's basically Jingle Sneed in a nutshell. He is all performative and zero skill. And people around him are just getting tired of his shit. Now lately, those that defend Jing's power level in the lore have pointed out Black Swan's line calling him and Sunday an emanator. And like first off, this was all a dream, so lots of things purposely didn't make much sense, such as her to stopping funding for her space station was pretty out of character for her. Therefore, Jingus Chungus shall up and being very powerful was super out of character for him since it was a dream. But even disregarding the dream portion of all that, notice how there are quotations around the word emanator. According to Grammarly, quotations around a word usually implies that the author doesn't agree with the use of the term. So my interpretation is that most likely Jiminy Yuan is an emanator, but he is so weak that Black Swan is basically mocking his status as one. Like, let's just be honest. Honest. Acheron sent foes to the Shadow Realm by merely unsheathing her blade. Meanwhile, Jimmy Chungus got absolutely trashed by Phantolinx. They're just not comparable in power level. And lastly, I've seen Jing Von defenders point to the animated short where he defeated Jing Li as proof of his powerfulness. And like, again, similar to the dream, these just aren't canon. So we could just disregard all this. But even so, if you actually watch the whole animated short, we see Jing Li Lee let herself get defeated because she came to her senses, which you can tell by the look on her face. All the fighting before the moment she came to her senses, Jimmy Chungus was getting absolutely trashed in a major way. 
Like we see he is constantly on the defensive and I just can't emphasize how embarrassing this is considering Jing Yuan is using a spear against Jing Li using a sword. As any Fire Emblem players know, spears have a massive advantage against swords in combat and this is just a historical fact of reality. If you don't believe me, just look up some fencing footage and you'll see that one spear user can easily defeat three sword users. So the fact that Jim Yon was getting absolutely mogged by a sword user while using a spear just proves he has absolutely no proficiency in combat whatsoever. Now it's one thing that fans of Genghis need defend his power and strategic capabilities in the lore, but what really irritates me more is when anyone tries to defend his power level in the game whatsoever. Jiminy Cricket is a terrible trailblazer for terrible players and no self-respecting theory crafter considers some use. Usable. It's like not even worth my time explaining to Genghis simps why he is bad because quite frankly they just live in an alternate reality. They're just immune to facts. Honestly, I'm convinced that in order to become a Sneed Young user, you need to take a theory crafting course on King Yuan mathematics, and basically it brainwashes you into believing King Yuan is the most powerful trailblazer in existence. Uh -uh. Students, welcome in for another session of Advanced King Yuan Theory Crafting. Let us review yesterday's assignment on King Yuan vs. Acheron. Question 1 I gave was as follows. According to Pridewin metrics, since her release, Acheron has been more widely used than King Yuan in both Memory of Chaos and Pure Fiction game modes. Explain why King Yuan is actually superior despite all of this. Bailu. Ugh. You have failed this required class for the past 100 years. Surely you recall the answer to this question for this year. I said that Acheron is better because she is used on 70% of teams and King Yuan is used on 6.65% of teams and 70 is Wait, bigger. Wait, stop, stop, stop. Ugh. What in the actual fuck was that answer? 100 years ago, I would have been angry, but at this point, Bailu, I'm just in utter disbelief at what a fantastic moron you are. Please, see yourself out of my classroom this instant. Shu Shang. Eek. Your answer, please. Uh, uh, okay, so, like, according to the figure, Acheron's rate of usage dropped by 7.91%, and you, like, only dropped by 5.86%. So, like, Acheron is, like, totally getting worse than you at a faster rate. Okay, uh, go on. So, like, if we plot these equations where X is the number of MOC rotations, we see in, like, 32 cycles, um, um... You will like be used on negative 180% of teams and Akron will only be used on negative 183% of teams. So you're like obviously better in the long run. Ah, I get it. So with the current trend, I'm bound to be superior to Akron and in anime mobile games, you want to invest for the future. Yes, that's like for sure what I'm saying. Great answer. You pass. QQ. I swear to god if this is another troll answer, I will lose my shit. Okay, so if we look at the data on Pure Fiction, we see that the current most used team is Himiko, Herta, Robin, and Adventuring. Okay, and? And Himiko's best, um, light cone is Before Dawn because, um, she makes better use of your own weapon than you do. <laughs> Like, even Herta, a freely given out 4-star, makes better use of your own weapon. 